Well, hi, good morning. Thank you for joining me here. It's the fourth day of October 2024. And uh, yesterday was an interesting day on this radio. I discovered a open resistor, which was uh, stopping uh, B plus from reaching the detector tube. I think the interesting thing about that is the radio still worked if you turned up the volume high enough. Uh, I think that that's kind of surprising in a way. So now uh, we still have, I also replaced one capacitor, uh, which was the blocking capacitor for the output tube grid. Now, uh, next capacitor to do, probably a good one to do would be this great big guy back here. Uh, there's another large, physically large one right here too. Why don't we look at what these two big guys are doing in here and uh, We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll take a look at the uh, schematic and sort that out. Okay, we'll take a look at the schematic here. Um, one of them's right here. This is the 0.1 microfarad, the big one. I think this is the biggest one in there. And what's it doing? It's beyond this medium-sized resistor. So it's it's doing something to all these screen circuits. So it's the screen. It's the screen capacitor, I guess we can, we can call it that, screen filter capacitor. Uh, doing its best to hold the voltage steady on the screens here. Uh, eliminate any uh, uh, signal that might be present there. Uh, pretty important. I think if this is weak, I think it just weakens the radio. I'm not, I'm not sure what else it does. So that's the big one. Now the medium size one, I think, is this one over here. 0.05 um, and it's, it's it's grounded to the chassis on one end and the other end is connected to, um, I don't know what this is doing exactly letting some antenna signal through I, I don't know what this is up to you know maybe this is well this is for one band this is for the other band hey there's those letters A and C again down here again, A and C. Still don't know what A and C actually stand for, but it must be the two different bands. Um, so if we replace this one, what would we expect? Maybe a little more volume out of the radio? Uh, if this was really bad, the radio would start uh, motorboating and howling and oscillating and doing lots of other stuff. I think I think. Maybe that's not quite so true for the screen. I was thinking more about the AVC capacitor. We'll, we'll get to that one. Let's do uh, let's do this one first. And, uh, the radio works well enough. I don't think we'd notice any difference. I'll go after the big one here first. Okay. I'm going to cut that guy out of there. to be grounded. Yes, definitely. This end of this capacitor is grounded here. The other end is connected to this terminal. Okay, let's get them out of there. There we are. 600 volt point one. Made in Canada. Okay, let's put this guy on the tester and we'll see. We'll see what it shows. I would tend to think, just basically, a uh, bigger physical capacitor with more, you know, more surface contact in here is just going to be that much more leaky for the same amount of general deterioration of capacitors. 
bigger they are, the harder they fall, I guess would be the. But then this was in a circuit where a bit of leak through here wouldn't do anything. There's, there's lots of supply available. It's a low impedance circuit. Okay, come on in for a close look here. Now. Oh. Hmm. 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 I think the last time I tested a capacitor, it was a regular capacitor. I had this switch still set in the electrolytic position. The last test I did, the capacitor behaved a little weird and uh, didn't leak nearly as bad as I thought. That's because of the position of this switch. It was actually, had this switch been in the right position, that last capacitor, which is in the garbage can in here, would have tested much, much worse. Okay, so we're ready now. 50 volts, what do you do? Yeah, not coming open. So this is as bad as our, my tester can, can indicate, basically. But this may not have been dragging the uh, radio down too much because of its position in the circuit. Okay, so I gotta fish, I gotta find another fish, I gotta fish for another 0.1 capacitor and uh, install it. So I will do that. Okay, got the new capacitor in there. Actually, it's a new old stock capacitor, but I tested it and uh, it's perfect. Well, that's good. So we're going to test the radio here and make sure it's still operating. So if I've made a mistake, it will become apparent now instead of after I've done five more changes. And then I won't know what the heck caused that problem. But I don't think there's going to be a problem. So we're at just under 90 volts. I don't think I have the antenna switched on down here, so it's picking it up just with whatever wire. Let's just switch this. Yeah, see? Antenna not doing anything, so actually it's receiving quite well. I'm listening for a distortion. Very good. Okay, we got another capacitor to go after here. And that's this big one here. So uh, that's pretty straightforward. Let's snip them out. Let me just turn on my computer checker in the meantime. Put on the mnemonic device here. Leave a little tail too. Now this guy does not look to be in very good shape. Well, so I'm looking at the seal around here. It does look like it's popped out a little bit. Let's find out. What size is it? 0.05. Okay, let's give it a test here. I'll just lean you in. Yeah, whenever I test electrolytic capacitors on here, I either forget to throw the switch down here in the first place, or I forget to set it back after doing an electrolytic capacitor make mistakes that way. Okay, here we go. So that's closed and it's not opening. So not in good shape. This one's involved with the antenna. I think I think a leak on this one might might be quite detrimental. On the other hand, the radio is working. I'd have to look more carefully to see just what this capacitor was doing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to replace it. 0.05. Okay, put a new 0.05 in there. Okay, well, I've done this capacitor, but this may not be what I thought it was. Um, and the reason is I started looking at the next capacitor in the RF part of the radio, which is right here, the next wax capacitor. 
And so I looked at this switch and thought, well, maybe I'll figure out the positions on the switch. And luckily it's easy to do. This terminal is grounded right here to the chassis. And that, so that's easy to find on the schematic. And then from there you've got the long way and the short way. So if you go the long way, the very last terminal is the one I just connected this capacitor to. So we're going to look at this on the schematic first. Just you know that the other capacitor is one uh, terminal away from the ground point. So go along side, right to the end, the very last terminal. There's nothing there but a capacitor that I installed coming here. Let's take a look and see on the schematic how this fails to add up. Okay, so, so here's the switch. Here's the grounded terminal. This is the short side. This is the long side. The last terminal on the long side is here. This is where I connected the capacitor. So we follow this wire through these hops. We get to this one. The capacitor definitely goes to a coil. So this, this looks to be in the correct position, but look at the value of it. 5600 picofarads, which is the same as 5.6 nanofarads, which is the same as 0 0.0056. But I just put a 0 0.05 in there. Because the capacitor I took out, which I'm looking for, is a 0 0.05. So what, what's happened here? Um, so either the schematic is wrong, the part was installed wrong, or somebody replaced it somewhere along the line with a size 10 times bigger. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's in this circuit here. This would be a critical capacitance, I would think, uh, you know, related to these coils. Uh, this is in the local oscillator, and I'm going to guess this is the short wave side. We've never even tried the short wave side. So what's happened here? I don't know. Meanwhile, if you want to trace this 0.05, you can follow this line back, and it attaches right to the pin next to the ground pin, the one I pointed out to you that has the capacitor on it that goes to ground. That's got to be that capacitor. Here, 0.05. But the 0.05 was here. I don't know. I cut this one out. And we'll see what it is. I don't think it's. I think it's a 0 0.01 myself, just based on its size. But let's cut it out and we'll see. And I'll replace this. That'll be the last one for today. I will have done the the RF side. Let's put it that way. The RF side of the radio. I think. So let's go after this one here. You know, it never seems. It doesn't seem to matter how uh, complicated the radio is. Something intriguing is going to be found inside of it. Now, sometimes that intrigue is just really my confusion that's what's really generating the entry but in other cases no um, so we're gonna go after this capacitor here now it's connected to a uh, ground terminal like a like a real chassis terminal here and I don't want to try soldering to that you need a blowtorch so I'm gonna try to leave a tail here at the same time I gotta leave enough wire on the capacitor. We can test it. Did I get there? No. I'm trying not to move this wire too much because I know the insulation is gonna come off it. I don't want to move any wires, really. There we go. Okay, I've cut it really close to the terminal, unfortunately. That was a bit of a mistake. I'll nip it off here. I should put a 0.01 in. What's happening in this radio? 0.01, let's test it.
Now I imagine this is going to test exactly the same as the others. Uh, that, that's usually how it goes. If one guy's sick, they're all sick. After all, they've all been to the same party. They must have eaten something. Here we go. 50 volts. It opened up just slightly. So not the worst capacitor in the world, but worthy of replacement. Okay, over we come. And I will put a 0.01 in there. Okay. Okay, we're ready to give it a good test now. Got the antenna switched on down here. So and we'll try the short wave for the first time too. Volume 90 volts. Come on, radio, you can do it. You've got a team. <laughs> Start getting a little worried there. Okay, I'm going to give it the full Monty here. Everybody else of consequence in their 110 volts. Like, how will that hold up? Will it work for them? It works. This seems like very wide tuning. These stu uh, stations shouldn't run into each other. Should be a gap. This is 860 here, so the radio is receiving really well off a good antenna. It has a good antenna connected. And we're picking stuff up at the high end of the band here. This is pretty impressive. Tone? Tone certainly works. It may, it, it may work a little too good, in fact. I haven't changed the capacitor for the tone control yet. Okay, let's go for short wave here. Okay. Uh, but during the volume control, that's up pretty high. How do you like that? There's just nothing here. Oh. Way out of alignment, I would guess. Just a guess, though. That's pretty loud now. That's a bad guess. Distorted. Lucky I, I, I landed on it because it's. Huh, really hard to tune. There we go. Okay, well, it's working. Probably alignment is really the issue. Okay, I think we can stop here. Call it a day. There's uh, some more capacitors to change tomorrow. I think those are more in the audio side of things. Uh, tone control, volume, and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, then we have to align the radio, and that'll, that'll probably bring up its performance. Uh, although it's pretty good on broadcast already. Fantastic. Uh, it's a great little radio. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, have a great day.